Hi everyone, I'm Chris. Welcome to Space Foods. Thanks for watching. Um, I know it's been a couple of weeks now, I think, since I posted my last video, but the reason is I've been on a great road trip across Canada to see some family, see some friends, and I'm also planning a road trip down to San Francisco at the end of October. I'm going to be going to the Cultured Meat Symposium, which is in downtown San Francisco. It's an annual conference that they have really to look at and explore um, opportunities in the cultured meat sector. So I really want to go see where things are at, hopefully do some taste tests. As I drive down, I'm going to be doing some taste tests of as many products as I can along the way. So I'll be sharing those updates on this channel. I'm not doing any promotions. This is all funded by me because I'm super interested in the industry. So please just follow along. I'm not trying to sell you anything. If you do want to support me, I do have a Patreon link be below. Um, I'm offering a couple of tiers, general support tiers. Then there's one if you are actually an investor. Eventually I'm going to be putting some, just my thoughts on cult food science and agronomics, sort of those valuations. My real dream is to sign up for a pitch book license that costs $25,000 per year. So if I can get enough signups, then I'm going to be looking at every single portfolio company for agronomics and cult food science. And I will be bringing all of that information together and giving it to any of those supporters on Patreon that are paying for that investor tier. Then I also am looking at having a taste tester tier. This is just for people who are based in the United States because most of the food, frankly, you can only ship to the United States. Um, I drive across the border if I want to order some. And so if you're based in the US and you want to join the taste tester program, then that means once a month, I will be sending you also when I do a video, but maximum of once a month, you'll get a taste test sent to you, whether it's every egg, white macarons, cultured chocolate, cultured vegetable oil, all of these things, which I'll be looking at on my own channel, when I post that video, you will get something sent to your address. So if you do sign up, um, the first food that you will get will be the Every Egg White X Chantel Guillaume Macron, and that will be sent to you when you sign up for that tier. So again, none of this is done to do any promotions for these companies. I'm simply super interested in where this industry is going and I really want to help everyone else discover it. Again, you don't have to support me. These videos are always going to be free, but if you want to, and if you also want to join the investor program, Patreon links in the description and we'll go from there. Okay, so this video I think is super cool because we're looking at a recent announcement from um, a cultivated fish company in California, Blue Nalu. So they've recently announced that their new plant is going to be coming online in about five years time, 2027. And at that plant, they're already predicting that they're going to have a 75 percent gross margin on those products, which is absolutely unprecedented for the industry. So this video, I want to look at that because I think while you should take those numbers with a heavy grain of salt, because that's five years away prediction, I think they have some really interesting technology, which is going to foreshadow where the rest of the industry is going to go. And it's also really going to be an interesting look at what are the actual profit margins of these companies going to be? Because in many cases, we have a lot of specialty meats, exotic meats. So there's companies I've seen that are actually working on wild game meat for tigers or lions. So you may have ethical issues with that. But ultimately, the argument is if we are growing these meats in a lab, it's all the same thing, right? So pushing that aside, um, we have those meats, we have Wagyu beef, we have all kinds of other meats that can, can, be considered, can be considered to be quite unique or sold at a high price point. And so there's that aspect of it. 
if you look at how these meats are created today, that's what's creating a high price. So if companies are coming in, making cultivated versions of that, all they really need if the input costs is energy, cells, and the food mediums that they're feeding those cells, right? All the, sorry, all the infrastructure to grow the cells is really fixed cost that is found in the plant cost when they create the plant. So any of the bioreactors, all of that fixed cost inventory is really mostly what the input costs are. Variable costs are quite low. Apart from employee and all the marketing and sales, but for the actual growing of the meat, you're not spending thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, whatever it costs to feed these special decals for Wagyu beef, right? You just have cells, you just have the feed, and you're just growing them in the labs. The cost of growing Wagyu beef should, in theory, be quite similar to the cost of growing hamburger meat because input costs should be roughly the same. You have cells, you have the feed, and you have your fixed cost of the plant. So I think that's going to open a super interesting conversation around what the potential profit margins of these companies could be. Blue Nalu is saying they're predicting 75% gross profit. Um, let's look at the article and see where they're at because I think it's really interesting. Again, take these numbers with a grain of salt, but I think it provides some really exciting potential opportunities for investors who are in the cultured meat space. Blue Nalu, tech breakthroughs will unlock significant profitability for large-scale cell cultured seafood. San Diego-based Blue Nalu has outlined plans for a large-scale cell cultured seafood plant it anticipates will be operational in 2027. This will deploy technology it claims can unlock the path to significant profitability and enable a projected 75% gross margin in an industry that some commentators argue face intractable technical challenges at food scale. So while many of the first wave products in the nascent field are likely to be hybrid, combining both cell cultured chicken or beef and plant-based proteins to provide texture and lower costs, Blue Nalu intends to launch with whole muscle bluefin tuna turo a high value product that typically commands a premium price. The firm, which has a 38,000 square foot pilot facility and innovation center, is currently in a back and forth with the FDA as it goes through pre-market consultation processes. This could take up to 18 months, at which point it plans to test the products in the food service arena and secure commitments that will help secure financing for a 140,000 square foot facility featuring multiple 100,000 liter bioreactors that can produce up to 6 million pounds of premium seafood products annually. So they're trying to select the location for the site in 2024. That's based on already having FDA approval to sell their products, hopefully next year in 2023. And then they want to break ground in 2025 and start operations in 2027. Once this facility is complete and optimized, we plan to replicate this around the globe so that we have regional production centers. Okay, let's go on to the technology breakthroughs. Actually, first, let's just see the photo here of their rendering. So this is their first large-scale facility that they're looking at building, which will be able to produce up to 6 million pounds of seafood products. Okay, so for the tech breakthroughs, um, so there's two key factors that have been key to the latest cost projections. So this is how they're getting to the 75% number. Achieving single cell suspension, which means that they can grow large numbers of muscle cells without microcarriers in suspension, so that reduces technology costs there. And li lipid loading technology, which that technology prompts cells to store a customized level of fat. So Blue Nalu doesn't have to grow muscle tissue and fat cells separately. 
So right now in the industry, if you want to make fish or beef, you need to grow those cells separately. And then a lot of companies are 3D printing something together or growing it on a scaffold. And so that will then create the structure for the muscle and fat cells to bind and combine to become more like normal meat. Also, the case with Blue Nalu is no scaffolding or secondary bioreactors are needed. So normally you'll have a multi-stage bioreactor process where you'll start the cells in a small reactor and as they grow to a certain amount, number, then you'll just put those into bigger reactors to increase their growth. So they can cut out both the scaffolding technology and an additional set of bioreactors, which is greatly going to reduce their costs of manufacturing, which is going to take them to this 70%, 75% profit margin that they're quoting. So the harvest cells are put through a cold extrusion process to create whole muscle type products with the same amino acid and fatty acid profiles of regular bluefin tuna. Okay, so how does it work? In the single cell suspension process, we have all non-GMO cell lines that we've been able to transition from the adherent state to the single cell suspension state, right? So we no longer need to adhere these cells to a scaffolding and we can suspend them and grow them without the scaffold. Blue Nalu's myoblast cells, which are undifferentiated, undifferentiated cells capable of giving rise to muscle cells are transitioned from an adherent state where they need to be attached to something to grow to a non-inherent state, such as that they can proliferate in a large bioreactor and float around in single cell suspension without needing microcarriers to attach to. So those at expense reduce cell densities, and then they may also become part of the final product formulation. As the cells are in single cell suspension, rather than free floating aggregates of cells, they are less vulnerable to shear forces that can damage cells in larger bioreactors. So in a large bioreactor, because you have say 100,000 liters of cells, you need to turn those and agitate them to ensure that the nutrients get to all the cells, right? You're constantly moving the liquid within that bioreactor around because if you put something on top, it's, it's not gonna flow all the way down. So as you scale up, you can be forced to have higher agitation and higher shear to get the proper mass transfer of nutrients to the cells throughout the entire reactor. So the agitation and turning and churning of the water is going to break some of those cells. So it's like if I put a single marble in a vortex versus a beach ball or 10 marbles held together by bubble gum. They're going to experience different types of shear. So you're going to have shear impacts that can break apart the aggregates. You're going to have diffusion limitations because diffusion can only go so far into an aggregate. And so you begin having these inherent limitations of mass transfer, shear effects that really limit some of the scalability, right? So if you're trying to build a 100,000 liter bioreactor because it's more efficient to have a 100,000 liter bioreactor than you know, 10, 10,000 liter bioreactors. And, but now they're developing the technology where that will enable that larger scale. Okay, lipid loading. So we are able to transition the muscle cells to also store fats. This is super interesting. So as for lipid loading, bluefin tuna toro has a combination of muscle and fat, typically 20 to 40% fat. So that provides a lot of the flavor and mouthfeel and texture of the end fish product. So rather than having multiple cell types, a separate muscle cell type, a separate fat cell type, grown in different bioreactors and then combined at the end through 3D printing or some other way of combining them, we're actually able to transition the muscle cells to store fats. 
which is not typical of muscle, but it creates the same nutritional profile as you would get in a fat loaded fat cell. That is super interesting. So to achieve that, we have patent pending technology, but essentially we're able to control the process to really be able to understand how much fat is going to be in the cell. And so also control the composition of fat to target the correct nutritional profile, which also gives you the proper flavor, mouthfeel, etc. So super interesting technology breakthrough here where normally muscle cells contain muscle, fat cells contain fat, but Blue Nalu has figured out a way to combine both into one cell. Again, if you want to invest in this company, check out Bagronomics. Not investment advice, just some information. Nutritional equivalency. So we are using muscle cells, and when they turn on the gene expression and protein expression, we're able to get the same protein that you have in fish meat to achieve nutritional equivalency at a molecular level. So it's not just the same macros, grams of fat, protein, etc., but the matching amino acid profiles and the fatty acid profiles. So far, we have developed hundreds of cell lines for eight different fish species, and we have initiated projects to expand into other premium seafood categories. Again, this plant is not just going to be for a certain kind of tuna. They're able to grow lots of different fish species in this plant. Techno-economic techno analysis. So to validate its commercial pathway at its large-scale facility, Blue Nalu commissioned a techno-economic analysis performed in collaboration with a global engineering procurement and construction firm, which are who are experts in bioprocess modeling. So with that analysis done by this third party company, they found that this technology means we don't have to blend the cells because they have fat and muscle in one cell. We're developing a whole muscle high value product that has the same nutritional and functional characteristics as conventional bluefin tuna. Blue Nalu's value proposition has attracted a number of strategic partners, including multinational companies in Asia, Europe, and the US. So for financing, they've now raised 84.6 million. And so that, so what gets them excited is their hope that to get commitments on sales of a fair amount of the volume as we do market testing over the next few years. The goal is to get into the US, but also other markets where per capita consumption of seafood is high and where our strategic partners can facilitate that and also where there's regulatory approval. So I think we can see Singapore being one of the first countries where Blue Nalu will actually be shipping their product. We feel not just that we can ideally sell a fair amount of the volume in advance, of even construction, but that this will also be very easily debt financed because it is something we'll be able to demonstrate at a very high level of demand by the time that we put that shovel in the ground. So they're trying to pre-sell all their product before they actually start construction of their factory. Very interesting. So that's Blue Nalu. I think we're going to start to see a lot of similar announcements. Again, I, I, I don't quite understand what the purpose of projecting this is, apart from the fact that they're trying to get more investor interest and also maybe for the fact that they're trying to get um, start their sales process. Um, I think it's, you can predict that, but Again, take it with a huge grain of salt because you're not actually going to know until there's a lot of investment required. 
to get to 2027. So I would take this article with a huge grain of salt. Um, this doesn't mean Blue Natalie is a good investment at all. I think it more means in broad terms that the industry is still evolving and that I think generally speaking, we will see they may get close. I would not be surprised if they get close to that 75% profit gross margin number that they're quoting, but I would say this is more indicative of the cell cultivated meat, cellular agriculture industry, profitability potential in general, than a look at this specific company because they could fail. Like we still have five years to go until we're actually going to be able to get that plant. And so I'm still think the overall industry is a good investment because we're not ready to look at individual companies yet until A, we have regulatory approval in more than just Singapore. B, we actually have more than just a pilot plant because building, as Elon Musk says, building a prototype is easy, production is really hard. So these pilot plants are a great start. It's step one, but when you try and then scale to six million pounds from maybe a hundred thousand, that's a whole nother level of challenges. So again, I wouldn't invest in this company based on the 75% gross margin, but I would invest in the sector. So agronomics or called food science, because overall as a sector, this is going to go somewhere and it will be successful in terms of who the individual companies are that are going to capture the most value. I can't say yet. Um, that's promising. Blue Nali could very well do very well. Um, and they have some very interesting technology breakthroughs that they're showcasing here. But again, until you can actually taste the product, I think it's really hard to put in money into a specific company. So that's why I'm actually really glad that these more VC firms exist where you can just invest in that firm. Um, probably if I can think about companies that I would invest in that are in this space, the only one I would put money in today would be Perfect Day because I've tried a lot of their products already and it's, they have it, their protein down. It's really good. They would be one actually, and then the every company actually would be the second one. So two companies I would put money into today. The rest, if I was a private investor and I, or an angel investor, and I had a lot of money to throw at this, then sure, why not? I would put money into Blue Nalu. But as a public random Joe who doesn't have a lot of money but wants to get into this sector, I think agronomics and called food science offer really good value for um, where things are at right now. Of course, this is all gonna change in three to five years even next year, as we start seeing more companies get into the market, the landscape's gonna change really quick. But right now, yeah, over the next five years, I would say agronomics and cold food science are probably the best places you can put your money if you're trying to get in this sector. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Super interesting technology. I'm Chris, and thank you for watching.